What's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video. I hope everyone's doing well. Hope you enjoyed the last video. It was fun to kind of change up the look of the Jeep, take some stuff off and make it look like a real pickup truck. But we have a lot going on today. Some cool stuff, some new stuff for the channel. That's going to be this 1979 Cherokee Chief. S. S. Yeah. Cherokee Chief S. There's no badge. Hold on. Get one of the badges. We got to show it. Oh, here it is. Here you go, Cherokee Chief S. So we picked this up, God, how long ago? Like, God, it's been at, a least, year? at least a year, and ironically- No, yeah, because it was warm out, I yeah. think it was. Ironically so, enough, this thing was sitting maybe three miles from our house for the last 20, 25 years. A long time, and I want you guys to guess how much we picked it up for. I think I mentioned in a video or two how much we paid so you guys will have to go back and find out what we did pay and search some videos but um maybe i'll put a little care package for the person who's closest or gets it right yeah, if you get it close or right on then i'll send you a little craft off-road care package but yeah we are starting the teardown process and uh that we're starting with just the small stuff because we have something that is going to be arriving today any minute. Yeah, yeah it's on its way. hopefully any minute now. And that's gonna be a big part of this build. So we'll talk more about that when it gets here. Um, but we have another one of these, the exact same year, model, make, all that good stuff. And that's this one right here. So, okay, sorry, I had to fix some settings on the camera, but this is the second one we picked up. And this was from a guy in Southern Virginia. Um, we picked this one up for, what was it? I'll tell you the price of this one. What, $1,200? It was 1200 $1,200. Um, it doesn't have a full motor. It's a short block, so... It's got, it's got trans, full drivetrain. Yeah, full drivetrain, everything. It, the grill and some of the bumper pieces are inside the vehicle. Um, but it's got seats, everything, dash, all that good stuff. Glass is all there. Yeah, glass is all and, and, perfect. And this is also a Cherokee Chief S. Yep, same exact thing. Same color, same... Yep. Uh, pattern it had the same decals and graphics on it guys it's here it is here oh, man. oh, oh. hell yeah that's so cool this is awesome all the way from Tacoma, Tacoma Washington. Washington we'll have to tell you more about how that came yeah. to be and, and we got some uh we have some thank yous and, and some videos and maybe definitely pictures of oh yeah well we have we did to it. there's a lot that went into getting this thing here and prepped and yeah uh, yeah, look at it. <laughs> there she is. Very cool. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, that thing's got at least. Look how tall that frame is. That's I know. Taller than we thought. This is awesome. I forgot what, what Nick said I, I size wise. It, I but thought it had at least a four inch lift. We'll see. Hey, what's, what's up? Come on, man. How you doing? Want me to back it up? Where's the rest of it? <laughs> <laughs> can you? Can you? Yeah. Or, or if you want, yeah, I can't. I can't move my trailer right now. I have to just pull the backyard. You can spin around, but dude, if you can't back it up, uh, even if it's up to you. you can 
That's perfect right there. Okay. You get a block of wood real quick. Just put that down the Alright, so uh, this is it. This is what we've been waiting this, on. This is the surprise from Tacoma, Washington. It, All the way from... Uh, Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, Tacoma, Washington. I, I kind of want to say who. Oh, yeah, I know. That's true. But um, we, we got to give big props to Nick Grio. Um, if it wasn't for Nick, we wouldn't have this. And... Nick was gracious enough to um, help us out. That's about all I'm going to say with this. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a 91 Wagoneer. Wagoneer. Not a Cherokee Chief right, or Cherokee. Cherokee Chief. Wag it's, it's 91 a Wagoneer. Wagoneer that is sweet, LS, everything. In Roadster the shop chassis. Roadster shop chassis, which is the reason why we have this, because he no longer needed this uh, stock frame. Yeah. Well, he went ahead and beefed everything up on this. And shocks. He's got the, what, Bilstein shocks. Yep. Um, upgraded springs. It's got an aftermarket fuel tank, which is all, already, all aluminum. I forgot all aluminum. what gallon. Thirty. I think it's thirty. So yeah. man, we're gonna we're gonna be able to drive cross country in this thing <laughs> easily. <laughs> yeah, some good road time with this. But the point is, is that this tank is going to allow us to do some cool things because, without getting too much detail on the Cherokee, the spare tires back here. And typically, um, the gas tank is on this driver's side yeah, on the Cherokee. Yeah. So we we can play around with a few things. This is a slightly longer wheelbase than Cherokee Chief, but either way, we have some ability to make some modifications to yeah. shift things around. Um, it was set up for a three inch stainless exhaust for his LS. So depending on which motor we go with, it doesn't matter. We can start fresh from there. It already has LS mounts on it. Yep, yep. Um, but the cool thing is that when we were, we were out in uh, Tacoma back in December for some meetings that we had, we went down to Grio's Motors and we actually got to ice blast this, which I think we have some pictures and maybe video. Yeah, so I'll, I'll throw all that in there or right here so you guys can see. But it was really cool. Yeah. If you don't know what ice blasting is, uh, well, you're about to see. Yeah. But take some time and go watch some other videos. It's a really cool process. We ice blasted pretty much this entire thing. And the process is really cool. You'll listen to Nick talk more about it, and he'll explain yeah. it. So you guys so, can watch that stuff really right here. It really. Yeah, and just to kind of preserve the ice. So, whenever you're ready. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, so we are going to dry ice blast the frame from my 1990 Grand Wagoneer. Um, this is essentially a complete donor frame. I did a frame swap on my daily driven Grand Wagoneer, so I had a spare frame. And it has uh, some LS motor mounts on it. It's got Bilstein struts and steering stabilizers. It's got the stock axles. Um, new brakes and rotors, so it's a pretty complete frame. I'd also done the BJ's off-road 26 gallon aluminum fuel tank. So there's plenty of usable parts. And the cool thing is that, you know, when we were talking about this, this will bolt right up to your guys' Cherokee Chief. It's yeah. the exact same dimensions. Um, so given how good a shape it's in, we're just gonna clean it up using dry ice blasting. It'll go super fast and will expose the true nature of the frame a lot faster than and a lot cleaner than if we were doing pressure washing with degreasers. Um, so it'll be a pretty cool process to watch. Yeah, what's kind of neat is I'm pretty impressed that this is pretty much a rust-free frame. I mean, it's in great shape already. Yeah, it lived its own life in the West Coast. It was down in Eugene, Oregon. Um, the frame does have over 100,000 miles on it, but they built these things pretty well. Again, and to your point, no visible rust, just some surface rust on the axles and some of the U-bolts. Uh, it's all minor. But yeah, most of the suspension stuff is brand new from when I lifted my Jeep and played around with it. Wow. Yeah, this is awesome. Great. Dry ice blasting is an incredibly uh, satisfying and extremely safe media as opposed to using walnuts or sand or something that is actually trying to attack surface oxidation and or strip paint. Uh, we can utilize this dry ice, which is in pelletized form, and put it through our dry ice blasting machine and essentially gauge the size of that pelletized ice based upon 
how sensitive of a surface we may be working on. Some people use these for uh, wool carpet interiors for coach built cars, but a lot of people nowadays are using them for sales prep to remove factory cosmoline, uh, to remove any road grime or oil leaks that may have accumulated on an underbody in particular. Um, it is safe to use on finished color clear paint, so some people do actually do that to their car, it might be a little excessive. Its real beauty is in preserving uh, the medium below what you're attacking with the dry ice. Abrasive. Yep, and having yeah. it, it is going to abrade slightly, uh, but not in a manner that will degrade the finish. Uh, the abrasion is in the form of the ice striking uh, the material, freezing what is on the material and the compressed air, and freezing, actually dropping it off the, the material while preserving the material as we see it. Right. Where it's substantially full. Where? Just, you're going to put probably. 15 of those in there, so. Um, that there's another one. Yeah. What does one of these cost? Um, this one I think costs about 35, 40 grand. Good God. <laughs> for the machine. So you better be using it quite a bit. Yeah, but it's paid for itself. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. way over. Okay, so we got the machine set up now. We're fully loaded with dry ice, as you can see in here. Uh, so that's going to be uh, ground up and shot out uh, through the hose and trigger. Uh, so we've got a handy little light here. We've got a tip here. We're just using a broad tip because we're not going to be doing a lot of detail work. It's a pretty big open frame. But we also have just this screen behind us that tells us uh, one, our burn rate of ice, the amount of ice we're going to use per minute, so about a pound per minute. Uh, you can adjust the, both the PSI of the outputs, and then we're just going to play around 80 PSI because we're not attacking anything too difficult. But then you can also change the size of the ice to very small. We're going to be around 0.7 because that's where I've had the most success. And once again, we're just... For what we're dealing with, right? Yeah, we're just dealing with it. So those are our settings for now. You can see an indicator of how much ice is in the basin, and we're just going to go after it. So awesome. Um, we just have to kind of keep the machine close and pick a place to start, and we'll go from there. But.
Before we start working on the Cherokee, I do want to let you guys know that the TJ and Crute is uh, TJ and Crute, Crute, the one Jeep. We are not going to stop making videos on that. Just because we're starting another project doesn't mean that we're just putting that on the back burner. We still have work to do that. Paint, little loose ends, things like that. Camping, wheeling videos, all that is still going to happen. Um, but in between us working on the Cherokee, we are going to be wheeling, camping, adding things to the Jeep and my dad's Jeep. So um, it's not going to just be the Cherokee build on the YouTube channel. There's still going to be TJ, JK, wheeling, camping stuff. So don't worry. I still love to do all that and I want to post it. So that will still be on the channel as well as Cherokee content. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up if you're thinking, oh no. There's going to be no more wheeling and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're still going to be doing a lot of that. Just adding some more content. So hopefully that clears some things up. Yeah. Guys, check this out. So this is one of the seat brackets and it is this side is supposed to have a piece of metal that's holding it down to the floor and then it's bolted. But I mean, this stuff is all just Swiss cheese and rusted through. So we're pretty sure that the entire floor is gonna have to be replaced because we're already like flintstoning it. You can stick your hands right through. Let's see if I can show you guys. Did you say flintstoning it? Yeah. It's fine. Look, look, dude, my whole hand, wow, is through here. You guys see that? Well, you know, we gotta realize that this thing was sitting out for like how many years with the window cracked? I think yeah, three I know. Years, so yeah, that, that didn't help. So that's what we're working with. Yeah, this is how rusty and nasty it is. We have scissors over here. Mm, there was a uh, right there, a utility knife. Don't even need one. <laughs> Sure, it's good to breathe all this stuff in. Yeah. I just cut it out around the whole thing. I don't even need to cut it. I can just. I would try to salvage, at least pull that out of there if you can bend that back far enough for you. Yeah, but the problem is. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. At least just try to pull that one up. I doubt if it'll come, but... Oh no, let me just vacuum. Okay, well, <laughs> I came out. I knew that was gonna happen at some point. Yeah, that's good. That just sheared right off. Well, at least the bracket's still good. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. Never mind, dude, it's got holes in it. All right, I think uh, that sells. Of that isn't right now. You can grab that back corner. All right, here's a little update for you guys. We've gotten, I don't know, we've been out here for, I don't know, an hour working on this, yeah. a little bit longer. Um, we got quite a bit done for just spending a little time on it. I'll show you guys. You saw us taking out the seats and stuff like that. So this is what we're left with right now. So when I said flintstoning it earlier, that we really are. We're, yeah. we're running through the floorboards. And, um, I, and I guarantee you this, this wouldn't have been a problem if this driver's side window wasn't down about three inches for 20 some years yeah so that's what happened there yeah someone you can tell patched with and they oh we had installed it it looks like with like silicone and phillips head screws it was just some really thin god aluminum sheet metal like roofing those. yeah like roofing tin <laughs>
three more. Go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now cut it hard, drive her passenger. All right, push. 